Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I am once again testing an inadvisable rocket design. Normally I offer good rocket designs, but uh, this week I've been dealing with some other kinds of rocket designs. And there's one that people mention from time to time, so I've decided to just get it over with. And you can see that we're starting off with Block 1B from the Space Launch System by NASA SLS. And so this is off to a wonderful start. I've got the payload up there, we've got the core of SLS there, and I'm slapping two starships on the side of it. This is the Starship Boosted SLS idea. The starships will be recoverable, I'm putting the fins on. Technically, probably they don't need the tiles, maybe, uh, but if they do have the tiles, it should be probably flipped the other way around so that the top of it uh, with the bare metal is facing the orange foam. But in any case, it's probably not going to be in too much danger as I tuck in nine sea level Raptor engines instead of using any of the vacuums. We just want optimal sea level stuff. And I decided to go with a 55.4 ton payload to the moon. Initially, I'd put the lower orbit payload, but I think we're just going to go straight forward the lunar payload. And here we go, testing out whether I can make orbit with that 55.4 tons while reserving the fuel in the starships for their return. And we'll handle the starship return portion and make sure that happens properly later in the video. Uh, initially, I had a bit of a problem here. Uh, we had a little bit of a shakeup, and then the fairing came off, and explosions happened, and then the starships started doing something um, very unseemly to the body of SLS. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that may be, I don't know, that just seems wildly inappropriate here, but it all, it all ends in explosions anyway. So, right, I decided that I should auto-strut the starships, which I had not done before. So, auto strutting to the grandparent part did in fact solve that problem, thankfully. And so, here we go again. No need for actual struts this time, but I have recently encountered a situation where auto-strutting and even rigid attachment did not solve the problem, and I had to add actual struts, which for some reason with Kerbal Joint Reinforcement still do have an effect. Sometimes you do need the actual struts. Go figure. Anyway, off it goes. Launching from the Cape. Though, I don't think I launched from Pad 39B this time. I'll generally be launching from the stock pad. And I initially reserved about 20 seconds of propellant in the starships. Later on, we're going to have to bump that up as it turns out. But first, we have to verify that we're going to get to orbit with this payload. Uh, well, with this payload and enough to transfer to the moon with. Yeah, interesting little explosion. I'm using RL-10C3s in this case. And ultimately, it does make orbits with enough to transfer to the moon, but just barely. And with the long burn time, that's probably not good enough, but I figured I could do a more efficient launch. And so I bumped up the payload to 56 tons. And then launched again with the intention of actually doing the lunar transfer burn this time. Hopefully it wouldn't be too tight. Considering the starships are actually wider than the body of SLS, it didn't look as bad as I thought it would. They're 9 meters, the SLS body is 8.4 meters. Uh, still, it's, it's, it's a thing. Now, the starships have more than double the mass of the SLS regular boosters. They also have much more thrust than the SLS regular boosters, as for some reason one fairing decides to stick around, they have about 21 mega newtons versus the SLS regular boosters having 15, but SLS is meant to carry more powerful boosters than those five segment boosters it has now. 21 megatons is probably still alright. Uh, compared to my previous Raptor 9 boosters though, the Raptor 9 boosters that I used to use with SLS occasionally had of course nine Raptors, so the same thrust, but they were less mass. Uh, they only had 
about the same amount of mass as the SLS boosters. So they really gave a lot of extra thrust weight ratio. In this case with the Starships, it doesn't have that much thrust weight ratio, but it has a longer burn time with the increased propellant load. And so I'm trying to get 56 tons to the moon thanks to that. But of course, it has to be recoverable for the Starships. So that's a little bit of a complication. So I end up using up all the propellant from the stage and it isn't quite enough, mainly because I decided to go clockwise around the moon retrograde and the RCS wasn't quite enough either, but I decided that that was close enough that it would be serviceable for now, especially since I was just controlling it manually, probably we could eke out some more Delta V if I was using either KOS or Ascent Guidance. But for now, I decided to work on the return of the starships. So. I shut them off at 20 seconds again, with 20 seconds left in the stage, I mean. And off goes SLS. But one thing I didn't realize at this point is that the control point for the Starship was not correct. It was not rolled correctly. So when I tried to turn here, I ended up bumping into the other Starship. Uh, that was not my intention, but that was because I really need to actually do control from here again. And I took out a fin there. But at least it was on the other starship, so I didn't negate the effect of the test. If I had knocked out a fin on this starship, then that would have made it not exactly accurate. In any case, I'm going to have to redo this because we run out of fuel and we didn't manage to get a proper boost back. We didn't boost back all the way. So I decided to reduce the payload to 50 tons, ultimately. Ultimately, it'll be 50 tons and then proceed. Nope. Oh, now let it sink a little bit there. Release the clamps a little bit too early. But off it goes again. And I'm looking at the landing guidance not because I'm using it but because I want to see that target difference when I'm doing the boost back burn. Okay, and off they go. We're reserving a little bit more fuel this time to last time and trying to turn properly but I forget if I use the control from here thing this time and I lit all the engines there and we are boosting back uh, we still end up falling a little bit short but at least we're moving in the right direction and the target difference shows quite a big target difference, so we're not actually getting back to land here. And I end up nosing in. It ends up going nose first into the ocean. Ah, well, actually ripping apart. Actually rips apart. So that's not good. Part of the problem is I'm not using an automated script to land them. Uh, I've got an automated script to land the Super Heavy back. Uh, and. For Starship, uh, I think P.E.K.K.A is still working on one for it to go through the atmosphere properly. I mean, we've seen that, seen them do that before, but changes have been made to Starship that have thrown that off. Uh, but I don't have one where Starship does the boost back and lands at return to launch site uh, like this, the way Super Heavy did. So I have to do it manually, and I don't have. I have a KOS script for like Falcon 9 or something, but. I have not adapted that for Starship. And for this weird rocket idea, I'm not going to do it especially, I don't think. Okay, turn around. It's a bit wild there. And this time, reserving 30 seconds of fuel, we seem to have enough. So taking a look at the target difference in the landing guidance window, we get to a minimum. It's not accurate, but then again, it's measuring from a pad that we're not trying to land at. My orientation here is definitely not going to be exactly right. Uh, I'm sure Pekka would be able to do this. This is Pekka's mod. The Starship is from Pekka's mod, and Pekka would probably be able to do it a little bit better. And certainly he did not approve of when I ended up going tail first, shifting the center of mass. But the vehicle seemed to want to go tail first a little bit earlier. The flaps aren't working quite right, possibly because of the way I placed them. 
and it ended up drifting backwards because now the center mass is low um, so it's leading with the center of mass in this case don't know how exactly it does that probably the flaps should be doing something or another to counteract this but anyway I decided that a competent program controlling it would be able to land it we have reserved enough propellant if it was all done exactly properly it would have worked out so I decided reserving 30 seconds of fuel is about the right amount and now we have to see whether while reserving that amount the rest of the rocket can get the payload over to the moon. So off go the starships reserving that, off go the fairings this time properly and then the core stage concludes. And we have the EUS Ignite. It makes orbit with what seems to be enough for the transfer. I plot that out. And then we do the burn. So again, this is 50 tons now. Uh, if you wanted to verify that for yourself, you take the amount of avgas, which is always the payload, and divide by 1.33 to get the tons. Alright, so with that burn, we do get the transfer, though because of my timing, the periapsis was a little bit off. That's actually the minimum right now. Uh, I didn't actually line up with the moon initially, I did an off-plane transfer, and the long burn threw us off a little bit. But I took that result. 50 tons to the moon is what I'm claiming for this arrangement, but I don't think anyone wants to use it. Uh, it might be politically controversial for all I know. It might be political satire these days. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.